Get Up Nation. My name is Ben Biddick. I am the creator and host of the Get Up Nation podcast, where I serve individuals, organizations, and societies to develop and sustain resilience and perseverance. I'm the co-author of Get Up, The Art of Perseverance with former Major League Baseball player and CEO of Rurong Living, Adam Greenberg. The Get Up Nation podcast is brought to you in partnership with GotYour6Coffee.com, where Navy veteran Eric Hadley is committed to serving first responders, veterans, and their families through a variety of nonprofit organizations. No stranger to adversity, Eric has fused necessity of coffee with his passion for public service. You're already purchasing coffee. Why not empower your coffee with purpose? Why not purchase coffee that not only has your six, but also has the backs of those who don a uniform of service for our communities and great country? Learn more about Eric and his freshly roasted award-winning coffee at gotyoursixcoffee.com. Welcome to this episode of the Get Up Nation podcast. Recently, I had the honor and privilege of speaking with Casey Decker. Casey is a two-time championship bull riding finalist and bull riding champion of Oakdale, California. A decorated professional bull rider, he truly believes bull riding is the greatest sport on the planet and wants to give everyone the opportunity to participate. He's the vice president of bullparty.com, where he and his lifelong friend Cody Wood are committed to sharing their profound respect for the animals they raise and ride, the love of the sport, and helping others experience the profound thrill of riding bulls. This was an absolutely hilarious conversation. I'm so happy to share with you this episode of the Get Up Nation show. Thank you, Cody Wood and DJ Eva for connecting me with Casey. Casey, welcome to the show. Let's start right now. Where are you at? Where do you live and work? I am in Bennett, Colorado. It's a large town. We haven't got a stoplight yet. Still wait for that. And been living here for about the last 10 years. I was bucking bulls out here. Mostly my work is I'm an entrepreneur. I own a few different companies. So I would say self-employed. I don't get paid really on a regular basis, basically, just when I make my money. So I don't know if you really call it a job or just a lot of bad habits. <laughs> it, was, it was great speaking recently with your friend Cody Wood about bull riding, his experience surviving cancer, and his excitement about bull party. Will you share some of how you first became involved in bull riding? Oh, man. Yeah, so I've been I've been around the rodeo industry my whole life. My dad used to be a bareback rider, and actually Cody's dad and my dad were friends when they were younger, when they were, you know, in high school and, you know, through their 20s. They're still friends. They've been friends for a long time. That's actually how I got to know Cody. I don't really ever remember meeting Cody. I just always remember being friends with Cody. Hmm. So it's one of those friendships that, you know, you've had those people in your life for so long, you can't ever remember the first time that you met them. Hmm. Yeah. So saying that, you know, I've been around rodeo my whole life. My dad rode bucking horses, bareback horses, which was, you know, different from bull riding, but it's still a rough stock event. As I was growing up, I just always wanted to be a bull rider. I don't know why exactly, probably some kind of genetic imbalance. <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure what happened with that, but for some reason I wanted to be a bull rider. <laughs> and from the time I was old enough to get on sheep I was riding sheep with a bull rope. I had a little bull rope my uncle made for me. You know, I'd put it on the sheep. I'd ride sheep. I'd ride goats. I'd ride anything that moved. Ponies. Didn't matter. I was riding them like a bull. So, you know, as I grew up, I started getting on calves, started getting on steers, moved on to junior bulls, and then worked my way up to actual real bulls. Hmm. Can you take us to that moment where the first time you rode a bull? Can you walk us through your emotions? What did you experience there that first time? Try and think. <laughs> like the first time I got on, you know, an actual mature bull, like a big bull, I can remember, you know, getting on the animal, but I don't really, I feel like I was more excited hmm. about it than anything. Not so much as my emotions were, you know, real crazy because, you know, being a bull rider and doing something like that, you have to be a little bit different than the normal <laughs> human being so your, your brain doesn't quite function the same way and you have something that can stomp you into the ground when you're excited about it and you're like not scared of it I don't know if that's if there's anything right about that but you know it's a uh, it's something that I always wanted to do and when I finally had my opportunity to start riding mature bulls my mom told me yeah you can start you know entering high school rodeos and things like that and I was actually able to go to you know amateur rodeos and compete on animals that were you know actually mature animals you know it was it was just like anything else I was excited but then again you have a learning curve 
because I went from getting on bulls that were two and three year olds to getting on bulls that were six and seven year olds that weighed, you know, 800 pounds more than the bulls I was used to getting on. So even though I was excited and I was so little at the time, it took me a little bit to kind of figure out, you know, how to ride those animals and, you know, figure out exactly what I need to do to maintain my balance and, you know, deal with the strength of that animal. Sure. Have there been times where you experienced a dose of fear or did you have, you know, some injuries? You've been obviously extremely successful at this sport. Have you stayed resilient during times when it's been frightening or when you've had injuries? The biggest thing is, you know, everybody's going to get hurt. Everybody knows when it comes to bull riding. It's not if you get hurt, it's when you get hurt and how bad it is. Mm -hmm. Because if you're a bull rider, it's not set up for you to win. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to win. <laughs> so, you know, when it comes down to it, you're going to get hurt. You're going to fall in the wrong position. And it's not that these animals want to hurt you. It's just that sometimes you fall in situations where they cannot get around you. Like when they're stepping down or something. I mean, they can try and move, but all their force is coming down. You fall right in between them and the ground and they step on you. It's not something they necessarily need to do. It's just something that happens once in a while. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that was always my thought. You know, they have a job to do and I have a job to do. So I never really took it that seriously when I got hurt. Yeah, it was serious when it happened as far as, like, my body. But I never took it as anything other than just kind of a stroke of bad luck. It was just something that happened, you know, and it's just part of the game. So, you know, I always tell everybody, if you're going to be stupid, you better be tough. <laughs> so that's, you know, that was part of my deal is I always tried to, you know, when you come back from something like that, yes, you're going to have a little bit of butterflies. Yes, your brain is going to remember what happened the last time you got on an animal. But that's part of, you know, training your brain and being able to manipulate your brain <laughs> to do an event like that, to do a sport like that. Because honestly, your brain is there to protect you. So your biggest opponent when you're doing something like that is your brain because it knows you're not supposed to be getting on that animal. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's the biggest thing is overcoming that, being able to overcome your mind and being able to train your brain to be, you know, aggressive and successful against something that you're not supposed to be fighting. Wow. So, I mean, bull riding is covered on Fox Sports, CBS Sports, televising national final events every year. For people who are interested in that, who want to experience that, and they want to do more than just watch it on TV, they want to experience that, they want to feel that adrenaline rush, they want to, you know, do what you're describing here, how can they start to get involved in this? Well, that's where me and Cody, we kind of came up with this idea called Bull Party. And, you know, everybody has... Everybody has their different adrenaline things that they want to do in their life, you know? So there's a lot of people that want to go skydiving. There's people, you know, that want to do bungee jumping. There's people that like roller coasters or whatever it may be for you to get your adrenaline going. Everybody has that adrenaline rush. Some people are just different than others and it takes a lot more to get that adrenaline out of them than it does certain people. So saying that, we came up with this idea called Bull Party where we're going to give these guys an opportunity to get on a bull in a controlled environment. Hmm. So, you know, we brought on some of the best bull riders in the country, you know, past bull riders in the country to help coach these guys and help get these guys started. And I mean, this is for adults saying this. 90% hmm. of the people that are going to be coming into bull party are going to be wanting to do it for one time, get it off their bucket list, do things like that. Sure. As far as kids go, like kids that were growing up like me, that all they wanted to do was ride bulls. I mean, the best thing to do is just try and find somebody such as myself that raises bucking bulls and has an abundance of animals in their house at all times. And, you know, getting with them and have them, you know, start getting you on animals. Because the only way that you ever really get good at this or ever really can be efficient, I guess, at riding bulls is by getting on thousands of bulls. Like, you can't... You can't practice, you know, anything that you practice, anything that you do, you have to practice. But there's no way to fake practice bull riding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But when you do it, I mean, there's different drills that people do, and they make drop barrels and, like, different things that people can use to help with their skill level and help with their moves. But in all actuality, you riding a barrel that's going to be 100% calm instead of trying to buck you off is completely different from getting on, strapping your legs around something that weighs 16 to 1,800 pounds that is a, literally a fire-breathing dragon, and his job is to buck you off. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> and you don't know how high he's going to jump, but you can feel his 
energy underneath you and between your legs, and you know he's damn sure going to do something. You know, <laughs> so, that's, that's a big part of it. You know, it's being a bull rider. It just takes lots of repetition, hmm. lots of different things to do it. You know, and bull party is going to be a great way for people to be able to experience it. And I hope some people do actually continue to ride bulls after they do this. Hmm. But you know. What we're allowing people is, you know, we're going to be going for, you know, a lot of people that can just get something off their bucket list. Mm -hmm. They're going to go ahead and they're going to have, you know, a skydiving experience. They're going to have another experience in their life that they can tell their friends about. Mm -hmm. Tell me what that's like for you who have ridden, you know, thousands of animals and have experienced that, had the rough runs, had the injuries. What is it when you, with precision and excellence, you know, you ride that bull and that has got to feel amazing. It's got to be addictive. It's got to be something that just takes you to a higher level of experience that's just unparalleled. That's exactly why people do it after they get hurt, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, I remember one time I had a bull step both of his feet right on my chest. Jeez. Each side of my sternum, he separated all my ribs, all like the top six ribs on both sides, he separated from my sternum, uh -huh. all right? I literally thought I was dying at that point in time in my life. Like, I had, I swore I was dying. Like, I told my friends, I am dying. Uh -huh. <laughs> I thought I was dying. I've never been in that much pain ever before in my life. Wow. And even up to three work weeks after that, I had to sit in my bed, lay in bed, and talk myself into sitting up in the morning because it hurts so bad. Jeez. So, you know, when you have something like that happen that literally makes you lay around for weeks and weeks at a time, there's got to be a reason that you do this. Yeah. And right. it's basically, it's not because of the money. It's not because of the girls. It's not because of the lifestyle. It's because you're addicted to the adrenaline rush that is actually happening here. Hmm. And when it comes to having an adrenaline rush like that, you will never find anything like that on the face of the planet. Mm -hmm. And I say that, and a lot of people tell me, you know, I'm wrong, but what I tell everybody else is, this is like a David versus Goliath type deal here. You know, it's not, yeah, I'm jumping out of an airplane if my parachute doesn't open, I'm gonna die. Right. It's not like that. It's like, I'm going up against this big wild animal that doesn't like me on his back, and he might be mad at me by the time I get loose with his back. And once we get in a dog fight, there's a 90% chance that I'm not going to die from this. I might. If I do, I might get lucky, but I'm probably not going to die, and this is going to be a very miserable experience. <laughs> 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 you know? So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, like I told you, it's a different mindset that people actually have to have to be a bull rider. It's not because they're smarter than people. It's not because they're braver than people. I just honestly think it's a genetic defect. I don't know what the, I don't know why people would want to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the sport so much and I love the industry so much and I'm glad that there is that genetic defect to people because there's I don't know what I'd do if it wasn't here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Talking with Cody, we talked about the camaraderie of bull riders. That the people who have this mentality, who enjoy this adrenaline rush, who get on top of this bull and pray to God it don't kill him. And can you go into the camaraderie that happens there between people who do this? Yeah, you know, so what I always tell everybody, it's not you against everybody else in this sport. It's you against the animal, and that's what makes it such a great sport. It's not that you're competing against your friends because they're your friends. And, you know, everybody that does this has a special bond with one another. And when you have that bond between each other, you understand what everybody's going through. You understand when you got the bull that nobody wants to get on. You've been on him before, and your buddy's got him. You know how he's feeling at that point in time, you know? So there's a lot of different things, you know, that go into it. But the biggest thing about these guys is they understand the sport, and they understand each other, and they understand that it's not that they're competing against one another. They're competing against the animal itself. Yeah. And that's what makes this sport so great is because everybody's there to pull for one another because you're competing against an animal. Yeah, if your buddy has a better animal than you and you both ride that animal and he gets a higher score than you, it's not his fault. Mm -hmm. He just rode a better animal and it was luck of the draw. He had a better animal that time, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, you know, that's a big thing about rodeo where it differs from a lot of other sports. And yeah, you're going to have just like anything else, you're going to have people that get jealous of other people and everything else, but... You know, at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with 
calls or, you know, whatever might happen. It has to do with a certain person competing against an animal. Mm -hmm. And an animal athlete is that bad, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like it, bull riding and rodeo, you know, not just bull riding, but other rough stock events and, you know, even like steer wrestling, calf roping, things like that. It's not somebody that you're competing against. It's that you have somebody you know, an animal that you're competing against. And that's why I like the sport so mm. much. You know, I was always a big wrestler. I was always big into one-on-one sports. Mm. And honestly, I swear to you, that's part of the reason I kind of have the bull rider mentality. Is, and that's kind of why my brain functions that way, because I was wrestler and bull rider. Mm. And, you know, I always liked individual sports. So when you go up against something or go up against somebody in a sport, it's individually you. And that's why I like rodeo, especially bull riding, because it's based off of you. It's not based off your friend. It's not based off your teammate. It's all based off of you and you competing against this animal. Yeah, that's intense. And you've raised bulls. You breed and sell them. Will you share how much care is taken to ensure these animals operate at the heights of their potential? Like you're saying, these animals are athletes themselves. And they make this adrenaline rush possible. Will you share a little bit about the process of creating these amazing athletes? We've been very fortunate in the buck and bull industry. Me and my brother and my mom started about, oh, I'd say about 12 years ago, a couple cows from a guy. And boom, we started, you know, breeding them. Well, the next thing you know, you have 60, 70 cows (laughs) running around. (laughs) And you have all these animals running around. But, you know, our main goal is what we've always tried to do is make everything. Nowadays in the industry, everything is bred well. So saying that, you know, everything has the bloodlines behind it. You want to have good bloodlines. I mean, that's your center base. Everybody wants to have the good bloodlines. But we realize that this is a performance sport. Therefore, everything that we do and every animal that we have, he has to perform or she has to perform. So we don't just buck the bucking bulls. We actually buck the females as well. Because only 50% of the time do you get a bull. The other 50% of the time you get a female. So, you know, saying that, I look at it like athletes, and I'm sure you know Ed McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows Ed McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. Him and his wife. His wife was an Olympic athlete, Ed McCaffrey, wide receiver from the Broncos. They get together, they have a kid, all of a sudden they have one of the best running backs in the country. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) So I look at it the same way as, you know, producing athletes is I need these females that I raise to be just as stuck, just as hard, be just as athletic, and be just as nasty as these bulls are. Mm. So we'll bring those games with Every year we'll buck those females and we'll keep the ones that we think are the best ones and we'll breed them back to our best bulls and then that gives us these wild little animals that hit the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, these wild animals, they go with their moms for the first eight months of their life. Mm -hmm. So I always tell everybody this, I love my cows like I like my women. (laughs) Beautiful and crazy as shit. They know that I'm the boss, basically. Mm-hmm. They also know 
when it comes time for me to run them in that bucking shoe, they can do whatever the hell they want. And I'm not going to tell them to do anything different because mm-hmm. that's their job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I expect out of them. I expect them to give me 100% coming out of the bucking shoe every day of the week. Mm-hmm. But when I'm in there feeding them and walking around them and moving them around, I don't need them trying to kill me. So right. my big deal is I always tell everybody my animals act like civilized individuals because they are. Mm-hmm. And that's how I want them to act. Mm-hmm. When I take them out to public, they better act like civilized individuals or else they're going to go back home and we're going to do some more training. Sure. So when I bring those animals to town, everybody always compliments me on, oh, man, your bulls handle so well because I'll take those animals, I'll walk right in between them, I'll sort them what I want, I'll load them on the trailer, I get on the trailer with them, I shut the gate behind them, and they'll just turn around and over to and watch me shut the gate. Hmm. You know, it's, it's not that they're not meaner than anybody else's animals, they disrespect me and they trust me because I've worked with them so much throughout their life. You know? I see. Sure. We honestly start working those calves as soon as we pull them off their moms. The day we pull them off their moms, we start handling them hmm. and getting them going. Like right now, I got 43 of them that are, you know, a couple months off their mom. And you talk about a wild set of little individuals. Like they are crazy. <laughs> but they aren't as crazy as they were three months ago when I pulled them off their moms, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it just takes them, you know, it just takes handling them and letting them know. You know, that you're not there to hurt them. Letting them. You know, my big thing is, is every time I'm around them, and every time I load them in the bucket and shoot, I let them smell me. Mm-hmm. So that way they can, you know, they, they recognize my smell, and then they get used to it, and they know that I'm not there to hurt them. I'm there to comfort them, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's a big part of it. Okay. It's just teaching them that you're basically their friend. Mm-hmm. Tell me all the other things you do. Rocky Mountain CBD. Tell me what else you got going. Yeah, so Rocky Mountain CBD is the we started here this last year. We've been dabbling in the CBD deal a little bit, and now we are full-blown going after this industry. Hmm. So, you know, what we like to specialize in, there's a lot of people that do CBD, and there's a lot of people that do it for humans, which we do human products as well, and we have a lot of human clientele. But our big focus is on the performance animals, hmm. the horses, you know, hmm. the barrel horses, the roping horses, the race horses, the bucking bulls. We have a bucking bull product. You know, we have dog products. We have small animal products. So the big thing that we're trying to hit right now and narrow it down to is doing these different animal products. And saying that, we just got, you know, the we just became, just this last week, the official sponsor of the ABDI, the American Buck and Bull. Hmm. So we're the official CBD sponsor of them and also the Women's Pro Rodeo Association. Hmm. So, you know, we have these, these huge companies that base their company off of performance animals and people have been seeing a huge effect from our product, you know, based on their animals as far as it's not so much, you know, everybody thinks that these animals have to be sick or hurt or old to have to use CBD, but that's not necessarily true because what I strive for is, yes, I raise these animal athletes. When I ask these athletes to do something, I ask them to give 110%. Mm-hmm. And when they do that, just like any other athlete, human, animal, whatever it may be, you're going to be sore when you give 110% because right. everybody knows when you go train, you can train as hard as you want to, but when it comes time to do the actual competition, you're going to give that extra 10%. You right. might train at 100%, but when you go to do the actual competition and if you want to win, right. you're going to put that extra 10% out. You're going to be 110%, not just 100%. Mm-hmm. Therefore, saying that, when you do that, you're going to strain muscles. Yeah. You're going to pull muscles. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to do, you know, you're going to injure joints. You're going to do different things that need maintenance on. So, you know, as far as our CBD products go, that's why I always tell people they're having, you know, a lot of people tell me, oh, I don't need that for my animals. My animals are healthy. Well, yeah, my animals are healthy too. My buck and bulls are healthier than most people's animals or kids for that matter. (laughs) And, you know, when we get down to it, when these animals... When I ask them to buck and they actually bring something to the table, they are going to get sore. And so that's why I give them CBD is to help with the lubrication of their joints. It helps rebuild muscles. It's a natural anti-inflammatory. It helps when they travel. It helps keeping them on food, you know, because that's a big thing a lot of people don't take into consideration is, like, when something travels and they're used to being in a one spot at all times, and then you take them and haul them to a completely different facility. There's 200 other bulls they've never met before in their life. The water tastes different. Mm. They're in a building where the lights don't shut off at night. Mm. 
You know, there's a lot of different things that happen with these animals. So that's why we try and, you know, we try and do the best we can with them. And that's, that's part of the reason we started making these CBD products for these animals is because I know firsthand what it's like to have an animal that you haul across the country and have to expect to compete when hmm. there's a lot of other things going on that people actually can see, hmm. you know? Yeah. So having these animal products, it's been actually starting to do extremely well for us because there's a lot of people that are seeing the benefits from these animal products, mm -hmm. even the dog products, you know, but more than that, the horse and bull pellets, that's where, you know, we're really starting to hit off right now. And there's a lot of people actually starting to come on board with it. Mm -hmm. And that's our big focus for this next year is actually going to be, you know, getting more and more of these performance horses and more and more of these bucking bulls on these pellets and more, more of them on our product specifically because our product is very consistent. It's an actual hemp product. It's not derived from the marijuana plant, which a lot of these are. Ours is an actual hemp product. And, you know, we do everything from plant the seed to package the, package the product. Hmm. So it's a small business. It's a, you know, small town business. We come in, we plant the seed, we harvest the plant. We take it in, we extract it. We make the dog biscuits, you know, roll out dough and use a cookie cutter to make the dog biscuits. We make all the gummies. We do, you know, we do all this stuff ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an interesting industry I found myself in, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. And I really like it because it's different than anything I've ever done, but I'm still able to work with the animals that I love. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's something that I base it on for the animals that I love being around. And it's just that, you know, it's a different industry than I ever expected myself to be in because I, I grew up in construction. I still have a construction company. Mm. But as we move forward, I'm hoping I can get out of construction and focus more on Rocky Mountain CBD and Bull Party. Mm. And then Buckers Unlimited, obviously. I, I have Buckers Unlimited as well that I own. So, you know, that's a whole other part of it. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely stay busy. Yes. Yeah, I'm definitely not a person that has a lot of free time. I was supposed to be in Hawaii this week, but I don't have time to go on vacation, so I'm not in Hawaii. My business partner is, and he's, he called me his day. He's like, oh, you should have came down here, man. I said, well, I'm why don't you? <laughs> I, just don't, I just don't quite have the time. And he keeps telling me, he said, well, you're never going to get the time. You just got to go. He said, you're You'll appreciate it once you get there. He said, you're just never going to have the time to do it. <laughs> so you just have to make yourself do it. So huh. maybe one day I'll take a vacation. I don't know. I don't know how it goes. And that's why I'm so grateful you took the time out to share your humor and your, you know, your passion for this sport and your, your entrepreneurial drive that's inspiring to my listeners, I'm sure. And I can't wait to have them hear this interview and extract your insights uh, into being resilient and to being somebody who, who lives a life of being engaged, truly living their life, not sitting back and waiting for something to happen, but going after it. So I'm just appreciative well, that you took time to meet today. Well, you know, the big thing is, is I've realized in my life is, you know, I, just, I hit level 37 the other day, and I was a little disappointed that morning. I was a little irritated because I thought I'd always be retired by then. But I realized I'm never going to be able to retire. It doesn't matter how old I am because I have issues, and I have to do something on the daily. So, you know, <laughs> thinking about that, you know, I, I go back and I start thinking about, you know, different stages of my life. Sure. And what I always like to tell people, and... Some people agree with me and some people won't. But, you know, a lot of people sit around and wait for things to happen because they're scared of failure. Hmm. But that's one thing you can't be, is scared of failure. Because it doesn't matter how good you are at something. It doesn't matter what you do. You're always going to fail. Yeah. And, you know, nobody ever learns anything from doing something right. Hmm. So you always learn stuff from doing things wrong. And that's what makes you the person that you are, is by doing things wrong and not actually succeeding but it's how you bounce back from the things that you did wrong to make yourself succeed right. you know so i tell a lot of people a lot of times because there are so many people in this world that want to sit back and watch things happen and they have an opportunity and they can go in and do something but it might put them a little bit out of their comfort zone therefore they just stay in the same spot they're in, mm -hmm. and they stay in the same situation they're in, and they just remain comfortable. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that's why there are two different types of people in the world. There's the types of people that want to sit and want to wait for things to happen, and there's the types of people that pursue things and try and make things happen. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying just because you pursue something, you're going to make 
make it happen because it takes a lot of work to make anything happen. I'm not saying that I'm anywhere successful to doing any of this stuff. I'm just saying I like to try extremely hard because I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying I, I win every time or I do anything else, but I cannot see myself living a type of life where I wasn't doing what I'm doing right now, you know? Yeah. Maybe I'm not making as much money at certain times as other people are. Maybe I could, and you know, I could go have a job. I could have a nine to five job where I'm 40 hours a week and I have different things that go on. But that's not my life. That's not my lifestyle. And that's not the way I want to live. I'm all right with living my life. I'm not going to say I'm all right with being mediocre because I'm not. Mm -hmm. But I'm all right with living my life and trying and going through something. And at the end of the day, when it comes down to me dying, and I'm on my deathbed, and I look back, and I was, by at best, mediocre. At least I know I tried. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hell yeah. Yeah. And that's a big part of it is just, I, I just have a, you know, it's just something that's my pride and something that's my, the way that I am and the way that that my brain is wired that I don't, I don't want to just be normal. You know, I, mm -hmm. I like to be able to push myself. I want I like putting myself like my favorite thing to do is put myself in an uncomfortable situation that I've never been in before in my life. Mm. And that's weird. Like most people <laughs> don't understand that. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, most people are like, oh that's uncomfortable for me. I don't want to do that. Well mm. me, I like those opportunities because then I see what I'm actually made of. Mm, right. Exactly. You know, that's it's, yeah. yeah, I can go and do the same thing every single day and I can get extremely good at those things. Sure. And I'm good at the things that I do daily. But when you put yourself in a situation that you're not 100% sure of and you can come out and you can be, you know, yeah. it, it goes back to that kind of whole adrenaline deal. It puts me in a situation I'm not sure of and then I come out and I'm actually in a better spot than I started the day. Then I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that kind of makes me feel good about myself. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love that. Yeah, people, it's taking risks, it's getting after it. You experience more life that way. You test yourself, you grow, you, you fail, you, you hurt. You never appreciate not being in pain until you've been in pain. <laughs> no, I agree, man. And it's something that, you know, putting yourself out there, putting yourself, I always tell everybody, it's making yourself vulnerable. So it's just making yourself vulnerable to something and letting yourself be vulnerable and then finding a way to overcome that. And like I said, it may not be that it's, the same adrenaline level is riding bulls or things like that, but it's the same kind of mentality. You know, yeah. it's the same type of, hey, I'm I'm going to do this, and I don't care what it takes me to do this. I'm going to figure out a way to do this. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's a big part of. I mean, I'm not saying, like I said, I'm not saying I'm more successful than anybody else, but that's a big part of being successful is just figuring out ways to make things work when you're in a situation and it comes down to it, and you got to not stay. Not, you know, months, but hours right. to get something ready to go for an event that you're putting on right. or anything else, you know. So that's something that I try and pride myself on is being somebody that I can, you know, that people can count on. You throw me in a situation. Yeah. I don't care if I'm going to have the best decision, but I'm damn sure going to make a decision. And I'm going to stand behind. Right. Yep. Absolutely. You know. Yep. And a lot of people don't have the backbone to do that. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's something I try and take pride in as being, hey, if I believe in something, if I stand behind something, yes, it might not be right, but at least I made the damn decision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you I was wrong at the end, but at that point in time, I felt like it was the right thing to do, and that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. you got to take a shot. you got to take a shot. You can't just sit there. Nothing's going to happen other than bad if you just sit there. Yeah, and that's exactly it. You can wait for shit to happen and fall on your lap and go south or else you can try yep. to make the best of a situation and then it might it might turn out to be a great situation and all of a sudden you're the hero it might be the worst thing anybody's ever seen and you're the <laughs> or it might just might just snuck by and you just barely got through that one you're like oh, man i barely got by that one yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Oh, I love it. I know your time is precious here, so I always end the show with six questions to help my listeners understand the why within my phenomenal guest. Well, are you willing to run through these six quick questions with me? Yep, let's do it. I'm All ready. Right. All right. Who are you thankful for today? Oh, man, I'm going to have to say, you know, I'm thankful for my family and my employees. You know, anybody that you're only as good as the team that you hire. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all the people that I've ever hired, all the people that have really been on my team, people that I pay to help me put on these bull riding events, people that I pay to help me with my animals, anything like that. Those are the people that I'm really thankful for. And my family, of course, because they stand behind me and they actually, you know, whether my decision's good or bad, they believe in me. Mm -hmm. So, that's 
great. And now that we've covered who you're thankful for today, what are you thankful for today? Oh, just being alive, basically. I didn't think I was going to live this long. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm thankful to be alive because I, I never thought I'd make it past 25, and here I am, 37. I have a great life. Like, I can't complain. I have, you know, I have exactly what I always wanted. I have these bucking bulls. I have a house. I have property. I own, you know, a couple different companies. I, you know, I, anything that I can ask for, I, I have. Wow. So. Awesome. Other than a girlfriend, so if there's any single ladies out there that like, <laughs> like the guy that works hard, you go ahead and put yourself on. But. <laughs> <laughs> how do you fuel? Um, how do you fuel the fire within you? Man, I swear to you, I am extremely high strung individual, <laughs> and when I wake up, it's just in me. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know how it happens. I just when I wake up every day, I'm just ready to go. Oh, that's awesome. All right, and what's one thing adversity has taught you to value? a lot of different things yeah it's hard to break down just the one thing because anytime you find yourself in different situations you're going to value you're going to value all kinds of different things yeah. i mean i can't pick out one sure. situation or pick out one quality i mean i just i love being in situations where you know i have to change myself to be a different person or change myself to you know find different things that happen and i mean when you go to different things like that and you're able to produce different things like that you find that you value just honestly just being alive like yeah. i mean being right. able to put yourself in situations right and what are you doing today you may have never thought you could oh man i don't know i never really have thought that i couldn't do something in my life awesome. to be 100 percent honest with you great. like great always like everybody you know always thinks that there's something that they never thought they'd be able to do but that's just not really the way that my mind functions because if there's something i want to do yeah i might not be good at it right away but all it takes is practice right awesome awesome yeah and that just leads (laughs) that just leads my last question is what are you going to do tomorrow that you may have never thought you could and sounds like you're just gonna keep crushing it and keep exploring what are you going to do in the future what are you going to tackle i really like getting myself into different business situations you know so it's hard for me to say what i'm going to tackle in the future i like finding different business ventures i like like i told you i like putting myself in situations that i'm kind of uncomfortable in yeah so it's you know i love to find myself doing i i don't know honestly but i'm sure something will come along because i was even like the cbd deal they're just when sometimes when things come along yeah. like i always tell people you know things come along you can sit back and you can pass them up or you can say hell what, what the hell it's just money let's go ahead and invest in it i mean i can make more money eventually i mean it might take me a long time but i'll make more <laughs> right. you know if i don't do something i'm not gonna try so it's hard telling because you know i don't know somebody presents an opportunity to me and i feel like it's a good idea i don't i'm not the type of guy that bases things off the uh, you know, logistics, I guess. I'm not, you don't have to show me a bunch of paperwork. If you tell me something and I feel in my heart that it's a good idea, like, yeah. I'm going to go for it, whether it's a good idea or not. If we might fail, I have no idea, but that's just the type of person I am, you know? <laughs> I love it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. How can people learn more about you and your businesses? Oh, man, we're on, you know, all kinds of social media. Not that I'm good at it, but everybody else that runs the pages are. So, I mean, we got, you know, we have Buckers Unlimited. We have Rocky Mountain CBD. We have Bull Party. I mean, you can find us all over the place as far as, you know, social media goes and right. different things like that. And, I mean, to find me, I mean, I'm, if you go to a bull riding and it's a big bull event, I'm 90% of the time I'm going to be there. <laughs> so just look for the guy that's, you know, usually at the beer stand, <laughs> raising hell. That's evening. <laughs>